Now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what Indians are all about. I still say we Indian people are believers in the truth. This is the way of life that was given to your people. You born an Indian, you're going to die an Indian. Indianness is a good life. You're facing an Indian this afternoon. Good afternoon out there everyone and welcome to your number one source for Native American television news, Native News Today. I'm your host Jason Salzman here in the Muskogee Media Studios in our capital city of Alt Bulgee, Oklahoma, bringing you the next 30 minutes of what we have going on here at Muskogee Creek Nation and in our surrounding areas, all of Indian country here in Oklahoma. So glad you're joining us here on our home, the Tulsa CW1219, as we get ready for the coming months, the Christmas month, December is upon us and we have lots to do this month, lots to get to. There will be a big tree lighting ceremony. More on that in the coming weeks on Native News Today as we'll have a Christmas special for you. We'll have our um, annual end of the year special for New Year's. All of that's going to be happening. So this is an exciting time, not just for everyone out there doing their shopping and getting ready to spend time with family, but also here at Native News Today as we have lots of content to cover, lots of good things happening in and around Indian Country. The first thing definitely I want to tell you about for this week is we have an exclusive sit down with Muskogee Creek Nation Principal Chief Elect Mr. James Floyd coming off his victory in the general election and becoming the next Principal Chief of the Muskogee Creek Nation. He has agreed to come in studio and he did that earlier this week. We can't wait to show you those comments that I sat down with Mr. Floyd, talked about some of the plans he has, some of the things uh, in his background as he prepares to take the office of principal chief what the transition has been like and some of the things we can expect in the next four years from his administration also we'll take a look back at the native american fall festival that happened here at the muskogee creek nation our tourism and recreation department does a fantastic job putting this on over at the muskogee dome here in alt Maugi and at the claude cox omniplex so lots to get to this week very excited to start off the month of december don't go anywhere we'll be right back after this break with the new chief, James Floyd. We believe if you teach a man to fish, you can feed him for a lifetime. We believe that transitioning convicted citizens back into our communities enhances public safety. We believe that every citizen, even ex-prisoners, are important and are capable of change. We believe in reclaiming our citizens and investing them back into a culture that embraces healing and restoration. We believe in reintegration. And welcome back to Native News Today, and as promised, our special guest with us now in studio, the Principal Chief-Elect of the Muskogee Creek Nation, Mr. James Floyd. Mr. Floyd, thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thank you for having me today. Okay, well, uh, I know that a lot of things uh, have been going on for you since the election night. Yes. I know a very exciting time for you and your family, of course. Uh, first off, congratulations for you, you and your family as well. But what's it been like for you since that night to, to now, to where you're now uh, preparing to take office? Well, since the election night and now, it's been almost nonstop, <laughs> almost more than the campaign itself. Right. Um, you definitely make the transition from campaigning to looking at administering you know the tribe mm -hmm. and the affairs of the tribe and uh, government and so uh, you have to mentally make that change mm -hmm. and um, prepare for that mm -hmm. and so um, now we're beginning to have the transition we're looking at the uh, different aspects of the tribe and um, speaking with different people and and uh, making that transition with Chief Tiger to, my, to myself. Yeah, is that, has that been really smooth for you so far? Have you you really getting good feedback from the people that you've talked to and really being able to put you at a comfortability level that you're you know, uh, satisfied with? Well, the, the folks we've met with so far, uh, the staff have been very helpful, uh, providing us information, answering our questions, and uh, being cooperative because I believe that you know, we all have the same goal in mind, mm -hmm. and that's to make sure that, you know, the tribe continues to run smooth, that we take care of people. And um, so in that res respect, um, I think they've been very helpful in helping us to um, at least get the information and, um, and then move forward. Yeah, and 
for your background in healthcare administration, now you sort of segue into administration, but for the people, specifically your own people, Creek people, I have to imagine that that's got to be very exciting for you, not just to, uh, to be able to be in a leadership uh, position that maybe you've dreamed of your whole life, but at the same time, a new challenge professionally to where you go from one mm -hmm. segment of leadership to another. That's got to be professionally, you know, for you, just got to be exciting. Right. In my past, you know, it's, it's been that um, uh, I would be sent into a, a facility or a healthcare system that mm -hmm. may be in some type of distress or trouble, and um, it's the same type of thing. They kind of prepare you, brief you of uh, different issues that you'll be facing. You meet with the congressional people in the area, and then you just dive right in and start addressing the problems. Mm -hmm. Here, there's a little more time. Mm -hmm. Um, fortunately, so I can begin to know some of the issues and the people involved. And, um, but the approach is very similar. That's what's surprising. Mm -hmm. What's good about um, coming back to the Creek Nation and doing this is that I know a lot of the people, or I know their families, or I know the communities, and um, that really personalizes the whole effort tremendously. Yeah, and one of the things that uh, looking at what you have now in front of you, uh, certainly in the last four years, uh, one could, and we have many times, characterized Chief <coughs> Tiger's administration as uh, very aggressive as far as uh, acquisitions, things like that. We're doing uh, lots of development along the river in Tulsa. Uh, we have the Flying T there at Riverwalk, of course, and then right across the river we have our big expansion of Margaritaville. Um, I know that you're excited about that and being able to uh, navigate through that, but uh, here recently in the Tulsa World an article came out uh, talking about the costs specifically and the big investors in this process of getting some water in that river. Mm -hmm. uh, low water dams, uh, really lots of development to really make it thrive. Uh, we were listed in that article actually. So what I would ask you is, do you have plans or, or what are your thoughts on us being able to, as the Muscogee Creek Nation, uh, contribute financially to that uh, 243 million, I think was the sum that they thought it would take uh, as part of an investor in that. But have you talked with anyone or what are your initial thoughts really on being a part of river development with Tulsa? Well, I think that other aspect of this whole thing in Tulsa is mm -hmm. the mayoral election that's coming up mm -hmm. in a few months. Mm -hmm. And um, both candidates wanting to, you know, uh, speak with me mm -hmm. and the tribe regarding, you know, our role in that. Mm -hmm. What I've got, the approach that I've taken so far is, uh, uh, since I'm not in office yet, mm -hmm. I haven't spoken to either group, and mm -hmm. so I'll wait till I'm in office and, sure. and then I'll meet with them. What I've got to do, though, is be very um, clear to them that we have to balance our resources. Mm -hmm. I know that Tulsa holds um, a lot of promise in terms of economic development, but we also have people, you know, in the south end, let's say in, in Holdenville, mm -hmm. and areas down Jaeger and places like that sure. that also need economic development. So we have to make sure that we don't put all of our resources in one location and that we have more than um, one outlet to where we will be focusing on, whether it's in southeastern part of the Creek Nation around Eufaula or Holdenville, um, those areas also need attention. And so I need to bring that to the attention of the folks in Tulsa. Yes, it is a, probably our prime um, opportunity for economic development, but it can't be the only one that we have. And so we will have to enter into some negotiation with them, and I think it will uh, work for us, but um, yeah, we'll have to look at what their expectations are and what our capabilities are mm -hmm. and then other needs throughout the nation. Yeah, because I imagine uh, yourself, uh, you, when we have uh, election season, things like that, you go to forums, they're not just in Tulsa, they're not just mm -hmm. in the big city. We're very a, a very rural tribe. We have a very a rural communities that uh, have a lot of people in them that have their specific needs. And I imagine you probably heard that on the campaign trail that uh, let's pay attention to our small communities, things like that. Right. The good thing about the campaign is that you do get out there in front of <laughs> everybody, and I loved it, you know, meeting yeah. people, um, either renewing friendships mm -hmm. from people that I hadn't seen in a long time, mm -hmm. or meeting new people, um, and just hearing what their issues are and their concerns, um, as well as their ideas. They came up with some great ideas, mm -hmm. and so um, those things, you know, I made lots of notes when I was on the campaign trail, and I will refer to those in the future as we go forward, because 
you know, th there is a lot of validity in the points that they brought up, and I don't want to lose that. I want to make sure I keep it in perspective as I make decisions. Great, yes, yeah, and well, uh, these are some great responses. I uh, got, got some great conversation going. I need to take a quick break. We will stay with okay. us for another sure. segment, please. All right, let's get that commercial break right quick, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with another segment with Principal Chief Elect James Floyd here at the Muskogee Creek Nation, right here on Native News Today. It's more than just an associate degree. It's a life-changing experience. You'll see a lot of cultural features here on the campus. You'll see a symbol of the mound, which goes back to the history of, of Muscogee people as being in that Mississippian time period, that mound building society. That really welcomes our students whenever they first get here. The college in itself is beyond the building, is the people. They're passionate, very passionate about what they teach, and it shows whenever they're teaching. The instructors and the administration, they really believe in their students here. After a couple classes, I began to notice that it kind of felt as if I were returning back to something, something that has been lost for like a long time. As I learned more about the history of my people, to discover that there were very many great people that did a lot of good things for their people, for their nations, and that those people were American Indian and Native American, it kind of brings out a sense of pride that was not really there before. There is a future for our people. And welcome back to the program as we continue our feature today with Muscogee Creek Nation Principal Chief Elect James Floyd. We'll get now to the rest of the interview. Okay, well, moving on here, uh, you know, election seasons, they're, they're uh, like you said, they're, they're very fun. You know, you get out in the community, you get to talk to people, but sometimes uh, they can be a little dicey. You have to answer some tough questions, some things like that. Um, and in your, uh, in your position with the VA, uh, here recently in, in nation, nationwide news, there has been things come out where uh, patients uh, unhappy with VA care, you're going to have that everywhere. Um, and you've had to actually uh, take on some things here recently in, in Tulsa News covering your facility uh, with a patient uh, unhappy with her care. So what, what was it that, that you did in those times to where you, know, you would have things come up like that, either nationally or in your case, specifically, uh, where you had to take those tough uh, situations head on. Um, what, what, in what way did you handle it? Well, several ways. One is to be completely open mm -hmm. and honest about it because um, we provide the care. The VA healthcare system is a very high quality healthcare system. And um, so we had nothing to hide. So mm -hmm. you want to be totally honest in the, in, at the outset. Mm -hmm and open so if somebody wants to come in and look you open up your records and you let them look at it. Uh -huh. um, the other is kind of the political aspect of it that uh, you know there's the political agenda behind it and there's a political agenda behind veterans nationally uh -huh. in that climate and so um, local outlets were looking for stories as well and um, so the, the political hearings were going on and um, in that context you know, these stories come out. Mm -hmm. um, the one in particular that you raised was investigated. Uh, they found, you know, no basis for that. And, mm -hmm. um, and so we moved on. Mm -hmm. We cooperated with them fully and, and uh, continue to provide care. Uh, overwhelmingly, the veterans love the care that they get. Mm -hmm. And now as we move forward in, at this date, um, the political agenda has kind of shifted. Veterans have kind of gotten back to the back seat, it seems like, again. Unfortunately, they've lost some focus on the veterans' needs and mm -hmm. moved on to something else. And um, so the investigations that they've had nationwide have just kind of gone on shelf, uh, and the VA has moved on mm -hmm. and didn't really solve some of the issues that the VA needed to have salt because at the root of everything there is the resources and the lack of resources for the growing enrollment in the healthcare system. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of take that, but then also look at the same aspects coming into the tribe with growing enrollment of the tribe and the needs we have that will grow in the future. All right. Uh, and 
also too you look at some of the things too that you are faced with where you may have formulated an opinion on where do we really need to uh, mend some fence here at Muskogee Creek Nation or where we need to fix some things or what you've heard feedback from citizens that have said hey I'd like you to look at this we're not happy with this things like that uh, one of the things I would like you to address is the recent um, the memorandum of understanding between the Light Horse Police and the uh, Altamogee County Sheriff's Office. Uh, what will you do to sort of s try and reestablish that there? Well, already I've met with the Sheriff of Altamogee County. Mm -hmm. He and I have had a couple discussions about that. And uh, fortunately, I've worked for the tribe when we began to put those memorandums in place mm -hmm. back in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And so I know the value of them. I know that what they bring both to the tribe and to the county in law enforcement because um, of the complexities of the different uh, overlapping jurisdictions mm -hmm. and the need for resources in times of you know act criminal activity and things like that you need all the resources that you can gather mm -hmm. and so we need the county just as much as the county needs the tribe mm -hmm. um, the sheriff rice here in okmulgee is uh, very open to uh, looking at the memorandum. Uh, he and I, as soon as I get in office, we'll be sitting down and talking. And I, th I think that will be reestablished. On our side for the tribe, then we take that memorandum, we explain to our Light Horse Administration what our role is, and, um, and probably the sheriff will come out and be with me, and we'll jointly talk to our, our staff about that and what w we need to do and how we act under the memorandum and how they will act as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I think jointly we'll, we'll move ahead with that and also other counties. So um, yeah, that's very important that we get mm -hmm. it established. Uh, also the budget shortfall, you know, you, it, it can't be ignored. We've heard about it. We've felt it here on the show. Uh, you've referenced it in some of your campaign. Uh, what about that? Uh, what's your level of concern with the budget shortfall? Well, we do have a budget shortfall. Mm -hmm. um, my concern is that um, that we address the shortfall without affecting the uh, jobs of people, that we can still provide the services that citizens need. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, cursory review with people that we've had so far has um, identified some areas where um, we can um, make some uh, cutbacks in our, within our administrative parts of our budget mm -hmm. without affecting the programs and without affecting the staff, that won't provide everything. Um, we need to maximize the revenue that the tribe can bring in, not only just in our commercial businesses, but in healthcare and some other places where we have um, revenue coming into the tribe. That will help. And, um, and then we'll work with the National Council in negotiating the budget that the tribe will have for fiscal year 2016. Well, you talked about with, with the budget specifically too, and, and to touch on what you were mentioning uh, just a moment ago with the mass layoffs and things like that, it doesn't necessarily have to happen when, when you look at budget shortfalls and also people think new administration comes in, mm -hmm. oh, I'm gone or something like that. You, you know, you, I know you want to address those kind of things. Right, and having worked for the tribe before, I, I can understand mm -hmm. that feeling because I went through that with mm -hmm. several elections when I was here. Yes, we do have to look at the organization and there will be some reorganization, but reorganization doesn't equate to mass layoffs. I think my approach would be looking at the efficiencies that we can gain in the organization that will um, reserve the money where it's needed the most, mm -hmm. but still retain the positions that we have. Um, there may be some duplications that we need to look at. Um, may be some ways that we combine some of the functions that we have where they'll be more efficient to the services to the people and that's the things that I'll be looking at the most. Um, we're not going to be going in uh, and looking at you know this one person versus another person. We don't need to do that. We need to look at what the mission of the tribe is, how we deliver the services and the endpoint being what is being received by the, the citizens of our tribe and if we can make sure we can do that efficiently, we'll, we'll do fine. So I hope that, you know, to reassure the, the, you know, the staff of the nation is that, you know, we're not focusing on individuals, we're focusing on how we move forward as an administration to address the needs of our people. What about your concern with the recent housing allegations? Is that something that you've paid attention to and, and want to address? Or um, the housing issues 
We haven't met with housing yet. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that, you know, the Office of the Inspector General was at the housing office. Um, having worked with them before in my previous roles, you know, they're fairly independent. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know that they wouldn't share anything with me, but um, I would certainly want to keep abreast of any investigation as it progresses, or if it's just an administrative review and they mm -hmm. provide the report, we'll take the, their recommendations and we will follow them in strengthening the housing authority. Great. Um, now that we've uh, got past some of those tough things, your inauguration's coming up. I know you're very excited about that. Um, a big event, all of mm -hmm. Creek Nation's talking about it. That's gonna be January 2nd, correct? January 2nd, uh, 10 a.m. at the at Dome. The dome. Yeah. And you uh, getting the speech ready or things? <laughs> How's that going well, so far? the speech, yeah, not so much yet. <laughs> but um, engaging people from throughout the Creek Nation, uh, just as I walked in the studio here, was on the phone with somebody and very excited about their role that they will play mm -hmm. in the inauguration. And so I think what we will see is something that will be respectful of all of our people of the nation, uh, regardless of where they live. Mm -hmm and something that will be practical as well, and something that any person would enjoy attending. And um, I, th I think that um, we continue to plan that, and, and um, in the next few days, I think they probably have everything finalized. Mm -hmm. um, we will have the, the National Council um, in their swearing in in the same um, building that we'll be in, mm -hmm. just preceding my inauguration and the well, Second Chief's inauguration. And um, then in the afternoon, hymn singing, which will be organized by a group of people. So it's really going to be right. something that's very people-centric mm -hmm. and something that they can all come in and feel comfortable in being in. And then that evening, a stomp dance in the Dome. And um, so I think it, it holds something for everyone, right. and I hope that everyone enjoys it. Well, there you have it, folks, straight from the source himself, the principal chief-elect of the Muscogee Creek Nation, James Floyd, who will, as we said earlier, will be taking office on the 4th of January, will be inaugurated on the 2nd of January at the Muscogee Dome here in Altmulgee. Want to see all kinds of people out for that big event. Uh, Mr. Floyd, thanks for being with Thank us once you. again. Love having it. you in the studio. Thank We're you for inviting We're going to take another me. quick break, and we'll be right back with the rest of the Native News today. Looking for your next 18-hole adventure? Then take a look at Fountainhead Creek Golf Club. Nestled in the beautiful confines of Lake Eufaula State Park, large sloping greens and well-placed bunkers characterize the Muscogee Creek Nation's Floyd Farley design course and offers a fine test of skill for any golfer. Stay up on all the latest gear and equipment with a visit to our pro shop. Have lunch at the turn at the Clubhouse Grill. We're waiting to accommodate you at Fountainhead Creek. Give us a call at 918-689-3209 or visit fountainheadgolf.com to book your next round. Fountainhead Creek Golf Club, close to home, far from ordinary. I think like creatively I was just into drawing for a long time, like ever since I was a kid. It wasn't until maybe around late 2007, 2008 that I became aware of uh, the graffiti scene. It, it changed everything for me. You don't even really understand in the beginning what kind of journey it's going to take you on, but I think that in order to become great at what you do, it really, it really boils down to how you feel about yourself and how you feel about your own artistic creativity and your own expression. You know, I, I just, I think it, be, it comes from like a belief in oneself and pushing yourself to the limits as far as you can take it. And welcome back to Native News Today. I'm your host, Jason Salzman. As we carry on, we hope that you enjoyed hearing from the Muscogee Creek Nation Principal Chief Elect, Mr. James Floyd, as he talked about his plans and goals for the office and what he sees in the next four years, and also a little bit about himself, his background, and what he brings to the table. So I want to thank him again for stopping in and uh, sitting in the hot seat, if you will. Uh, it's only hot because we got the lights on here in the studio. Uh, we loved having him, uh, thankful for the opportunity to have him come in and sit with us. Well, as I told you in the opener, we went over to the Muscogee Creek Nation Fall Festival. It happens every year this time of year and everybody getting excited about the fall transitioning into this uh, season as Thanksgiving Christmas is upon us. Lots of things happening over at the Fall Festival. Arts and crafts, games, things for the kids, opportunities to take pictures, really take part in a very, very neat Muscogee Creek Nation event every year. So, went over to the Dome, the Claude Cox Omniplex, to bring you sights and sounds from the Fall festival.
15, 20 years ago, uh, Chief Tiger had been a big part of the Indian Fall Fest that used to happen around Okmulgee, Tulsa area. And about four years ago, he suggested to us that he'd like to see that it be revived. With tourism and recreation, we initially did it at Riverwalk. And we had the outside tents and we did it all outside. It was, you know, it was, it was cold more than anything, but we did have great participation. Three years ago, we brought it to Old Mogi, did it outside. Well, just in case inclement weather was to come about, we decided to do everything in the dome. So we wanted to get our facility showcased. Today we have vendors, we have arts and crafts. You know, our idea was to initially get the vendors here so we could get early Christmas ideas for people. And, and you know, all of our vendors are local, so that's why we have it in Oak Mogi. We have a fry bread contest that we've done for three years. The winner gets $1,000. This year we have our first ever chili cook-off. So the winner gets $500, second $300, and third $200. So we have quite a bit of participation. And for us, it's easier to uh, let the patrons and the attendees of the festival be the judges. So we have $5 chili kits, and everyone's going to get a taste and vote, and it'll be people's choice will be the winner. I think my favorite is to uh, see the cook-offs. You know, fry bread is a big thing in our culture, of course, and, and everybody always brags and says they have the breast fry bread. So for us, we say, you know, kind of put your money where your mouth is in this. But the good thing, the other good thing is not only are there vendors, there's uh, Jupiter Jumps and Arts and Crafts. There's a basket with the Muskogee Creek basket maker making cakes. So the kiddos can sit, make a basket and take it home and be proud of that, you know, that they've learned that at the Indian Fall Fest. So. It's a great day, 10 to 4, and we're just happy to be able to host it. And that'll wrap us up for another episode of Native News Today. We certainly want to thank all of you viewers for joining us as you do each and every Saturday here on Tulsa CW 1219 for our program and all the people that made it happen this week. I want to give an extra special thanks to Muskogee Creek Nation Principal Chief Elect Mr. James Floyd for coming in studio with us, sitting down uh, with me talking about lots of things that our citizens want to hear about, including uh, his background and what he brings to the table, also his plans for the next four years and the Floyd administration. So an exciting time for everybody here around the Muskogee Creek Nation and with that being uh, the case he wanted to come in and talk with us and we certainly appreciated the opportunity. Thanks to Creek Nation Tourism and Recreation once again. Indian Fall Festival always a big hit. Love showing it here on the show. If you can't catch us here on the TV always go to our online channel. It's getting more and pop popular by the day. YouTube go to Native News Today on there. Check it out. Check us out on Twitter, Facebook. Everybody out there have a great week. We'll see you next time.